APR was founded probably around six and a half, seven years ago, and we are in Auburn, Alabama, uh, probably about an hour and a half south of uh, Atlanta, Georgia. My role is I'm the hardware design manager. I manage the hardware development side of things. Uh, my name is Matt Harris, and I'm an industrial designer for APR. I also do the engine management tuning. My name is Chris Trebasi. I am the official R&D technician and I do all of the nut and bolt stuff. It's basically an R&D facility it's where we uh, do all our research, all our development on all our products and we do uh, a fair amount of manufacturing there. It's, uh, it's unique it's, and we're an eclectic group of people at best. Uh, we have all kinds of people. We're all you know, highly functional people. We're kind, of we're kind of a nerdy bunch to be honest with you. You have to be kind of a nerd to fit in with APR. Well, I basically do the performance-related engine management tuning for the company, uh, along with one other guy. Uh, what we do is, after the EE department gets done uh, cracking the box, we make the performance data changes. Uh, we change timing, air fuel, um, obviously boost and load levels, basically, that uh, determines the performance of the car. Uh, we're the ones that make them go fast. With our tools that we use to design the products, uh, the time, efforts, manpower, and money we put into the design of the components, uh, and then uh, the material choices and process choices that we use um, uh, set APR above the rest, in my opinion. Normally, um, we can do a stage three kit like this in uh, one day, one day's time. Usually you spend about two to three hours on disassembly on everything, and then the rest of the day, reassembling, putting the manifold and turbo and intercooler. It's really not a bad job. It's very involved. Uh, there's a lot of steps in it, but it's, it's really not rocket science or anything. Okay, this is APR Stage 3 Plus Kit laid out um, so you can see each individual component. Uh, probably the jewel or the focus of the whole kit would be the turbo. And this turbo is unique. Uh, it's not an off-the-shelf turbo. It starts out as a Garrett uh, ball bearing GT28RS, aka Disco Potato, they like to call it. This turbo, we take the center section and we modify the uh, cold side, the compressor housing. One would be machining this groove to accept this piece, the turbo inlet pipe, so it fits precisely and there's a smooth transition between the both, both pieces. And then the inside profile of the turbo, of the compressor side, is remachined to match the compressor wheel itself. We've chosen a different wastegate actuator. Uh, the wastegate actuator that Garrett chose for the uh, 28RS uh, doesn't quite work uh, as well as it should with the stock boost management system on these 18Ts. Uh, so we've chosen a wastegate actuator that allows us to manipulate boost the way we need to. Another change on this turbo is the hot side or the turbine side. Uh, we've opted to go with a smaller AR uh, which uh, helps us to uh, gain boost pressure, maximum boost pressure shorter, it spools up faster. So those are the major changes on this turbo which makes it unique. When we go from the turbo and explain the manifold that it mounts on, this is our, our custom APR manifold. Uh, the turbo bolts right up to the manifold here, studs already pre-assembled. Pre this manifold is unique in not only the design, but also the material choice to, to, that we have this manifold cast in. It's an investment cast manifold, and using that process yields a very smooth inside runner. So there's no porting or anything that needs to be done to the head. Uh, post process is done to the manifold afterwards, after it's cast. It's cast in an Inconel 625, which has a very high nickel content, which uh, basically means that it has a very high melting point. So you won't subject this manifold to temperatures that are going to make it uh, expand and contract to where we have cracking or issues like that. The next part uh, is, the is the downturn. This will bolt onto the turbo and makes our transition down to the down pipe, which is a three inch down pipe. Um, from there, we have a two and a half inch or a three inch exhaust system that you can make up to the system. We're going to put a three inch exhaust system on this car today. Um, but some other interesting parts about this uh, turbo kit is all the inlet plumbing is uh, sand cast components, machined and then powder coated for durability. Um, this is the inlet for the turbo. It would come down into the turbo 
and made up like that. For this car, there's a three inch MAF housing conversion where we will have our cast, sand cast, machine, powder coated unit uh, that adapts into the stock air box. The internals are a flow straightener uh, and uh, a horn, a MAF horn. All this clips together. It's a beautiful piece. Too bad it's inside the air box, but um, this all helps to straighten the air as it enters the uh, sensor housing so that you can get a good reading on the sensor. This kit comes with all custom custom silicone hoses, five ply thickness for uh, strong stiff hoses that don't expand or, or get sucked closed. But all of this is custom designed by us and we have them made from a, uh, a silicone supplier. This is the MAF hose uh, that transitions between the MAF housing and the crossover pipe that goes across the motor. Uh, these are our uh, diverter valve hoses that allow uh, off throttle when you divert the, the compressor charge back into the system, these are the sil custom silicone hoses that route it back to the appropriate places. Uh, this is a compressor exit hose, which comes off the compressor side of the turbo uh, and uh, connects the intercooler system to the car also. This is all still custom pieces, uh, nothing off the shelf. This is all, all our parts. The kit includes all the necessary gaskets. This is a uh, compressor exit side. Uh, manifold gaskets, uh, downturn gaskets, uh, head to manifold gaskets. Um, one unique part about this kit is the injector setup for this car. Uh, the stock injectors are obviously not sufficient for the amount of horsepower and amount of boost pressure that we're running in this car, so we have to uh, increase the size of the injectors. Any number of 550cc injectors on the market today, but none of them uh, were acceptable in our mind so we have been in extensive development with uh, a supplier, a manufacturer of, of injectors to develop our own line of APR injectors. And this is, this is the result. Um, this injector flows 550 cc's, but also has the correct dispersion plate that allows it to atomize properly for an idle or low RPM uh, drivability. But these injectors were too large to fit in the stock location in the intake manifold so what we've done is designed um, new seats. You just simply remove the seat out of the intake manifold, uh, clean the threads, chase the threads, and screw these back in place and our injectors um, snap right into place. And also in order to do that, it's a pretty tight fit and there wasn't a specific tool to do that so we've also designed a tool that allows you to uh, put a 17 millimeter socket and just screw it right into place. So. Uh, all the tools, everything necessary to install the kit um, for unique issues like this are, are included. For our coolant and our oil feed and return lines, they're all stainless steel for uh, long durability. No issues with these uh, ever rupturing or breaking or fatiguing, so everything is braided stainless steel. Uh, it includes all the necessary vacuum lines and hose clamps to go along with it. One thing is uh, we relocate the uh, stock uh, boost frequency valve and in order to reconnect it to the ECU of the car we include an extension cable that just allows you to just extend the electrical connections to it. Since the inlet plumbing goes over the top of the manifold uh, there's a lot of heat generated by that so we've, we've designed a, a heat shield and once you install the inlet plumbing of the, car, of the uh, kit, you can snap this heat shield around it, which will protect it from the uh, temperatures that are subjected to it by the turbo and the intake manifold. One very good part in my mind about this kit is the instruction manual, because there are so many parts and they're specifically designed to be installed you know, in a specific location. And in order for you to be able to do that, we've uh, come up with a very in-depth uh, instruction manual, starting out with the components individually laid out. You can go through and look at the parts of the kit, verify that you've got it, uh, know what the, the, the parts are called so you can refer to them later on. And then it starts out with big fat juicy pictures. It would A monkey could install this kit. So if you ever have a problem installing this kit, you should probably look at the manual again. You can probably figure it out. One other thing that we replace are the stock motor mounts. Well, one of the stock motor mounts, there's a pendulum mount on the transverse motor that uh, that holds the motor in place from swinging on the top two perches. Uh, we replace those uh, two. There's three uh, rubber bushings within that pendulum mount and we replace two out of those three. We feel it's a good combination not to transmit as much 
vibration as possible into the cabin, but give you the, um, the response that you should get out of a motor, motor mount. I think that's it for the kit, really. Bye.